Hello, myself Mr. Amit Kusnare. Here we want to analyze a given fixed beam by using consistent deformation method. In this example, on this beam there is no any application of loading, but they are given that support B is rotated by theta radians in a clockwise direction. Next. First of all, we will find the SDA of the structure. So, as this is a fixed beam, SDA will be equal to 2. 4 is the number of unknowns that is RA, RB, MA, and MB minus 2 equilibrium equations. So, we are getting SDA equal to 2. So, next, just we are going to consider that RB and MB as the unknown. We will treat RB and MB as unknown. Now just we will remove the unknown RB and MB because of removal of RB and MB we are getting a determinate structure. Now next step is to apply loading. On this beam just we apply load the given loading and we will find displacement because of this loading. But in this example on this beam there is no any applied load. So we will go to the next that is we will apply the unknown so here come to this diagram so apply the unknown rb is the unknown because of this rb we are getting the upward displacement because of this rb we are getting upward displacement so delta b1 and theta b1 of course this is just like a cantrio beam subject to a point load point just here a point load is acting in the upward direction so for this we have drawn this diagram this is the m diagram drawn for first unknown that is drawn because of rb application of rb next apply this second unknown apply this second unknown apply this mb because application mb we are getting this displaced shape here this is the de delta b2 and theta b2 now to get mb we are going to draw a M diagram, M independent diagram because of application of this MB. Of course, this is a cantrio beam subject to a bendivent, subject to a moment of moment at point B. So this is the bendivent diagram for this cantilever. Now come to the sign convention. As here there are two unknowns that is RB and MB there are two unknowns. So for the two unknowns we are required to consider two separate sign convention. So just we will divide the RB and MB in two parts. So RB is the force and MB is the moment. So for the force governing deformation we have to consider is the deformation means both that is displacement and rotation of course here we come up this force we are getting dis displacement and rotation because of application moment we are getting displacement and rotation but the governing deformation for the force is the displacement for force we have to consider the displacement so here I have written that part. So for force cor corresponding deformation we have to consider is the displacement. For moment we have to consider a rotation. This is the sign convention. So RB is nothing of force. Because of force you have to governing deformation you have to consider is the displacement. So you have to consider displacement. For MB governing deformation you have to consider rotation that is you have to consider this part so of course rb and mb are the unknown so uh, what is our sign condition deformation in the direction of unknown take it as positive deformation in the direction of unknown take it as positive so rb is the unknown because of this unknown we are getting upward displacement for force you have to consider displacement for force consider displacement so this is the unknown rb is the unknown because of the unknown we are getting upward displacement so take this as a positive whatever may be the deformation because of the unknown take it as positive so because the application rb 
that is unknown we are getting upward displacement so take this as a positive so as delta b1 will be we are treating positive delta b2 will be negative because it is going in a down direction which is opposite of delta b1 that's why this will be negative now come to the sign convention for theta for theta sign convention you have to consider the second unknown that is moment so mb is the second unknown because of this unknown we are getting a moment we are getting a rotation in this direction so what are maybe the rotation whether it may be clockwise or anti-clockwise it doesn't mean but just you have to consider the rotation generated because of the unknown take this as a positive what are that may be rotation clockwise or anti-clockwise what are may be this rotation clockwise or anti-clockwise that rotation is generated because of operation unknown so that we have to take it as a positive only so here because of this unknown this rotation we have got in a clockwise direction we are treating this as a positive so theta b2 in clockwise direction we are taking positive here theta b1 is in a anti-clockwise direction which is opposite of theta b2 that's why theta b1 is negative and b2 is positive so this is the sign convention i have explained but next another sign convention i will give so of course for this part the second sign convention i am giving for second sign convention just consider only the first part so because of this force just consider displacement so because of the unknown we are getting the upward displacement so take this as a positive displacement in the direction of unknown take it as positive so displacement because this apparent force we are getting upward direction rb is going also upward displacement is also upward so take this as a positive so delta b1 we are taking positive means delta will be beta b2 will be negative so now for second sign convention sign convention what will direction of theta b1 and theta b2 just we are going to take direction of theta b1 and b2 opposite to that of delta b1 and delta b2 respectively here delta b1 we are taking positive means theta will be b1 will be negative directly here we are written delta b2 negative then theta b2 will be positive just we have to take delta and theta in opposite direction now apply now apply the compatibility condition delta b equal to 0 and theta b equal to 0 sorry theta b must be equal to theta because in this example they are given their joint b is rotated by theta radius in clockwise direction in clockwise direction they are given that's why i am taking this as a positive so theta b will be equal to positive so theta b will be equal to positive theta this is the second competitive condition now just we are required to find out the values of deltas and this thetas so delta b1 will be equal to this so simple while writing delta just you have to consider three brackets area central distance air variation so delta b1 is to be written by considering this diagram so just you have to consider area of this triangle that is half of base into height next central it's central distance from point b because rb and mb is removed that's why you have to measure central distance from point b only so it will be two third of base next multiplied by ea one upon ea so we are getting delta b1 so of course while writing a delta uh, while writing a theta b1 you are not required to come to that diagram m diagram just by delta b1 we can write directly write theta b1 here delta b1 we have got positive then theta b1 will be negative while writing theta b1 just consider first and last bracket that is area multiplied by ea area multiplied by ea just you have to consider only last first and last bracket that means you are getting theta theta means 
just you have to consider the area of m upon ei diagram so you are getting theta b1 next i am going to give a write up of delta b2 and theta b2 delta b2 and theta b2 is to be written by considering this diagram by considering this diagram of course this is a rectangle just you have to consider area of this rectangle and you have to measure and draw distance of this rectangle from point b of course again while writing delta you have to consider only three brackets area central distance and ei variation just area written central distance from b point ei variation just take multiplication of this delta b2 is negative we are getting this answer of course theta b2 will be opposite of it this is negative that's why theta b2 will be positive and while writing theta b2 yes we have to consider this area m upon ei diagram area area of m upon ei diagram just area multiplied by ei area multiplied by ei we are getting this answer area multiplied by ei so now we have got all the values of theta theta and delta just we'll put that value of theta and delta will good will get just put these two all values of theta and delta in this two equation after solving from from this two we'll get another two equation the just solve that two equations simultaneously <coughs> we'll get the final bending moment and just solve that two equations simultaneously we'll rightly get this two answer just m a m b r a and r b this is the sfd and bmd